Mickey week two, let's go. So I had yesterday off. I did nothing that has anything to do with medicine. Actually, I did like three questions for board review because those are coming up in August and it's only February, but August will come very quickly and very soberingly, if that's a word. It's hard to believe I've already gone through a week in this ICU. And it's hard to believe this is already my third call. You know, there's only seven of them. So after this one, there's only four left. And before you know it, I'm done. I checked the list this morning, like either a psychopath or somebody who's worried about getting slammed today, but it doesn't look so bad. I have four patients right now. That guy just ran a red light. Oh boy. I have four patients right now. There are two open beds in the ICU, I think. There will certainly be some movement throughout the course of the day, but it's looking like today is not gonna be a terrible call. You never know. <laughs> One of the nice parts of having the pre-call day off is that you can get everything ready for your call day so you kind of stay on track because in the last video, I mentioned how my diet was kind of wavering a little bit. I didn't really get a chance to do as much exercise as I wanted to. Uh, we finally finished putting our treadmill together, so I got 20 minutes on that this morning. And yesterday, I managed to pack all my food for today and pack it correctly and weigh everything out and make sure I was getting the right source of everything. So, you know, that's always a good way to start. But when I get home tonight at you know 10, 11, who knows when I'm going to get home? It doesn't bode well to be up at five o'clock the next morning. So. You know, we'll see how that goes, but for now, it is still snowing in Chicago. Yeah, and I'm gonna get to work, and I will see you on the other side. <sighs> All right, so I just signed out, and I have been trying to show you what the hospital's like on the inside a little bit. Um, I rounded this morning. I mean, Andrew, after their oxygen requirements going down, And then stuff started to happen. So this is actually the first time I've had my phone in my hand since 8.30 this morning. And it's like five right now. <sighs> um, you know, one patient got real sick. Um, you know, with COVID, we've been having to trach patients a lot. And sometimes there are complications and sometimes there are people who are like tenuous, but they need a trach. And <sighs> yeah stuff went down and then you know oh by the way I also have another eight or nine patients however many I have to deal with all day so it's been a busy day one thing that I've noticed about the ICU and today I'm post call yesterday I was on call so you know yesterday we get all the patients and we, we you know tidy them up and get them ready for making our plans and when we start making the plans and then we get them ready for later and then post calls where a lot of like the grunt work kind of goes down um what we see on post call is just like uh, there's so much you can probably tell by my eyes and that you know brain space e is limited <sighs> oh, man. but today was a day and yesterday was a day we got i think we got seven new patients yesterday um so you know brand new list we have three old ones too so list of 10 but an exciting day a code a set of chest compressions he's fine he's alive we're good and speaking of codes something else that i was thinking about is people don't know how often people survive codes because like you have tv and movies and all that stuff they show you something so real quick put down in the comments what percentage of codes you think are successful and i'll answer it next week's video and what a code means is your heart stops, you have to do chest compressions, you have to shock, you have to do something to get the heart restarted. So what percentage of those are actually successful in getting a heartbeat back? But yeah, I need to decompress my mind and I'll have a chat with the camera uh, a little bit later tonight. So it has been a day. No good deed goes unpunished. It's been an hour since I signed out, I was in the call room. Um, just hanging out and then page after page after page after page everybody's fine <laughs> don't, don't worry about that sometimes that happens sometimes your 10 hour days turn into 12 hour days pretty fast so my main goal now is to find my car there it is found it we're good and get home and try to decompress at the end of week too god you know every week just happens so fast it's just like I can't keep up with this video stuff. This is really just a lot. 
I don't know how other people do it. It's certainly tough, but all right. Give me a chance to like have my brain work for a minute. Ended on post call. So it was call yesterday, post call today. Uh, call yesterday was a lot. There were a lot of patients and a handful of them didn't really need the ICU. Um, but what are you gonna do? RED, they make the decision to send somebody somewhere and that's about it. It's not like we can go down there and assess the patient and say, yeah, ICU versus, no, not ICU. We don't get that option. So we got a lot of patients that probably didn't need to see us. Anyway, this past week actually, besides that, was marred by some victories. Um, you know, COVID is still very real and still affecting a lot of people, certainly a lot less than a year ago, uh, but it's still around and it still affects some people. One guy, probably the nicest patient I've ever had, mainly because he's a kind dude, of course, but he, um, he was very active in his recovery. He was the kind of person that said, I will do absolutely whatever it is I need to do to get myself better and to get the hell out of this hospital. And that's exactly what he did. You know, we preach, you gotta move around a little bit as much as your oxygen can handle it. And this guy's in, the, in his bed doing the YMCA, he's doing the incentive spirometer. Every time I walk by and I'm like, holy crap, this is the best thing in the world. And we got him to acute rehab on room air after having been intubated twice. Yeah, that was awesome. And I'm still pumped for him. I checked up on him. He's doing great at acute rehab. He's gonna get stronger. He's gonna walk his happy ass out of that hospital. And we're gonna be very happy to see him get out of there. Another guy I had was not gonna make it until he turned around and he woke up and he was fine. The last day I had him in the ICU, he looked straight at me and says, hey, do you guys have barbers here? <laughs> so, hey, yeah, he was doing a lot better. Um, you know, totally alert and oriented, a little bit weak, needs some, needs a little bit more rehab than the first guy. Not a COVID guy though, um, but he'll do just fine. So we got a couple of victories. You know, in the ICU, you are more used to easing patients and their families into passing away. Not often do you get a really, really sick patient making that 180 and getting better. Uh, those are victories that we have to cling very, very tightly to. But that's the end of week two. I have, <laughs> I have some stuff in between now and the start of week three, the real start of week three. Um, I have a shorter day tomorrow and then I'm off for my last off day of this rotation, which means I have like 14 days in a row of work, so that's not fun. But as you can tell, I'm exhausted, so I'm gonna go, yeah, take a shower and stare blankly into the abyss that is my brain. Um, no, but seriously, um, for those of you who are enjoying this, thank you so much for watching. If you like them and wanna see week three and four and watch me uh, mentally and emotionally deteriorate because that's what the ICU does to you, uh, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit that bell so you get notified when I post a new video, and I will see you in week three.